Hi everyone, welcome to our channel. In this tutorial, we'll show you how to make post-digital collages using Adobe Illustrator. It'll take less than 10 minutes to create this image. Let's start with the 2D exports. We have centered our building in the scene. Before exporting to 2D, we will remove the glass parts of the windows since they will not be see-through in PDF format. After that, we'll export to separate PDFs. First, we hide the environment. The reason why we are getting separate PDFs is to make it easier to edit in Illustrator. Then go to File, Export, and select to D graphic. Select PDF and click Export. Then you can unhide the background from the Edit menu. Now, we'll hide the structure and export to D again. Lastly, we'll add shadows. Click on the shadow symbol. Then you can play with the sliders until you find an angle you like. To export shadows only, you'll need to go to View, Edge Style, and uncheck edges. To export the shadows, go to File, Export, to D Graphic. We'll export as PNG. Make sure the transparent background is checked. Now we can move on to Illustrator to make the post-digital rendering. Photoshop is a great tool for making such rendering, but we want to show you Illustrator is another program that you can make architectural collages. It really depends on which program you are more familiar with. We're starting with adding new layers and renaming them then placing the 2D exports into those layers. We'll set the artboard size to 45 by 30. To remove the excess parts on the sides, draw a rectangle of the same size as the artboard. Then, select the Shape Builder tool and click on them while pressing the Alt key. First we'll change the background stroke color to a softer gray. Then we'll use the Live Paint Bucket tool to fill in. Go to Object, Live Paint, Make. We'll choose a light gray as fill color. We'll repeat the same steps for the main building as well. Change the stroke color to gray. Then use Live Paint to make its fill color light gray. Now we can move on to detail coloring using the Live Paint Bucket tool. We'll use a color palette with earthy tones. We'll start by coloring the door and window frames light brown to give them a timber look. To emphasize the shadows, use one darker and one lighter shade of brown. To pick colors with the eyedropper while coloring with the Live Paint Bucket, press the Alt key, then select the color you want to apply. After coloring the frames, we'll move on to walls and floors. We are using light grays and warm beige tones. The more detailed you color, the more three-dimensional the drawing will appear. Don't forget to use darker tones to add shadows. After the coloring is done, you'll no longer need the outlines. Select one, then go to select, same, fill and stroke to select all outlines. You don't have to delete them, you can move them to another layer and make the layer invisible. Now, we'll move on to add realistic architectural patterns to our project. We've prepared a bundle that has all the content we used to make this post-digital drawing. The link is in the description box below. We'll copy the seamless vector patterns to our artboard. Apply the pattern to a surface with eyedropper tool. To change the scale of a pattern, double-click scale tool, uncheck the transform objects box, then change the percentage. Preview the change, then click OK. You can lower its opacity to make it less intense. Repeat the same steps for adding textured patterns to different surfaces. Select the surfaces, choose the pattern with eyedropper tool, adjust their scale and opacity. You can also add an angle to the patterns of the surfaces with perspective. Right-click on the pattern, select Transform, and Rotate. Uncheck Transform Objects box. Adjust the angle according to the perspective. Increase the opacity to enhance the 3D effect.
Once you're done with the architectural patterns, you can add colors to the background buildings as well, only to make them appear more three-dimensional, nothing excessive. We've just enhanced the shadows on them by coloring and then deleted the outlines. Now we'll add the nature patterns. First, we draw a blue rectangle for the sky, then apply a sky pattern from the content bundle. Again, we'll adjust its scale. We'll click on the opacity to choose a blend mode. We'll go with the soft light. For the ground, we will cover it all with a grass pattern. Once our base is done, we'll be moving on to add cutout vegetations that are inspired by Henry Rousseau paintings. After placing the cutouts, we'll add the shadow export. Again, we'll change its opacity blend mode. We'll choose multiply this time and lower its opacity to 20. Our scene is done, but we can further enhance the post-digital feeling in Photoshop. We'll export the scene as JPEG and then open it in Photoshop. In Photoshop, go to Filter menu and click on the Camera Raw filter. Here, you have many options to adjust. We'll start with the exposure and contrast sliders. Then adjust the shadows and vibrance. We'll sharpen the image to emphasize the patterns. And lastly, we'll add grain. Export the image as JPEG again. This is the final result after editing. It enhanced the painting feeling. What do you think? You can also create different versions using the same base. We highly recommend checking out our painting-inspired landscape and nature patterns. We'll add their links to the description box below. And that brings us to the end of this tutorial. We hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Until next time.